Hi everybody, and welcome to Using Containers in Highly Secure Environments with Iris Lockdown. And I'm Eve, and I'll be walking you through our new container, Iris Lockdown, which will be available as one of our 2021.1 releases. I'm a developer on the container team here at InterSystems. Feel free to reach out via email at eve.phelps at intersystems.com or schedule a meeting with me during one of our Ask the Expert sessions. More info on those sessions will be at the end of my presentation. This session is all about Iris Lockdown. I'll be covering how this new container compares to the Iris container. It's mostly the same, but Iris Lockdown makes decisions during build and install time that help customers use Iris in highly secure container environments, such as certain conf configurations of Kubernetes and Gitpod. By the end of this talk, you should know whether Iris Lockdown is right for your project. First, let me be clear, Iris Lockdown is just Iris with some extra security features. It uses essentially the same source code, it's supported on the same platforms, it'll be upgraded on the same schedule as Iris, it's built from the same kit, uses the same binary, and just as there's an Iris Health complement of Iris, there will be Iris Health Lockdown as well. Iris Lockdown just defines different users and chooses different security options, making it inconvenient to some customers, but necessary for others in more secure environments. There are three differences that users need to care about. In Iris Lockdown, Iris uses, er, is installed and run by a single non-root user. The installation is in lockdown mode rather than minimal, and the private web server is disabled by default. The primary motivation for Iris Lockdown was to create a container that uses Iris as a single non-root user. Originally, and I'm talking our first Iris containers through early 2019, Iris was installed and run as root. Starting 2019.3, Iris was installed as root, but binaries and processes were owned by our predefined users, Iris owner and Iris user. This let us minimize the privilege for processes broken out into a few groups, but still let customers use root to control Iris. This is where the Iris container stands today, and it isn't changing with the upcoming release of Iris Lockdown. But in some container environments, you can enforce things like running the whole pod as non-root, a predefined user ID, group ID, you can disable privilege escalation so your non-root user can never become root. Uh, you can set a file system group that owns all the mounted volumes. Maybe your security team is requiring some of those settings or you'd sacrifice some convenience for higher security. Those requirements just aren't compatible with the Iris container as it stands today. It's installed by root, so some files are still owned by root. And even though it's run by non-root users, the fact that there are multiple users makes it incompatible with some of those Kubernetes restrictions. Our solution is a single user named Iris Owner with user ID 51773. Iris Owner installs Iris, owns all binaries, runs all processes, and doesn't need to escalate to root. This means that only Iris Owner can stop and start Iris. In the Iris container, root or Iris Owner could do that but Iris Lockdown will give an invalid registry ownership error for the root user. The volume mounted for durable sys must be owned by 51773 because Iris can't write to it if it's owned by root. Root-owned volumes can be mounted for like the CPF merge file, for example, but not a volume that's written to by Iris. Also, volume ownership might be restricted to a certain user if you're using the FS group security context setting in Kubernetes. It's important to note that UID 51773 cannot be changed. Since one of the strict Kubernetes settings requires that the user in Docker files is an integer, we explicitly switch to users 51773. As you probably would have guessed, Iris Lockdown chooses lockdown mode during installation. Lockdown installation mode has been around for years and is the recommended mode for production. The full spec is on our installation guide, but it means that fewer system users will be defined. Some will have fewer privileges, Password requirements will be stricter, like the minimum number of characters and special characters you can use. Uh, most services will be disabled by default. That's all but the web gateway, the terminal, and the console. And all services will require authentication. These settings can all be changed after installation, so you can customize the instance to whatever you need. Finally, Iris's private web server is disabled by default in Iris Lockdown. This means that the system management portal won't be available unless you set up your own web server, such as with our web gateway or a third-party application. You can see with my two images here, Apache isn't running in Iris Lockdown, that's the top image, whereas in an Iris container, there would be a few HTTP processes. This web server isn't recommended for production, 
but you can re-enable it in Iris Lockdown by setting web server equals one in the startup section of your CPF merge file. Let's take a look at an example of strict Kubernetes security settings that work in Iris Lockdown, but wouldn't be incompatible with our Iris container. In this demo, I'm deploying one Iris container using IKO, InterSystems Kubernetes Operator, on AWS EKS. If you're not already familiar with IKO, it simplifies deploying InterSystems products by supporting custom YAML. It's also easy to use with one of our newest products, SAM, System Alerting and Monitoring, which helps you maintain your deployments. I won't get into that in this demo, but check out the session Dev003 to learn more. On the top here, I have the YAML I'm using for one of my deployments, which I'll take you through in a moment, but let me get the cluster started first. I've already defined my Docker Hub secret, which is where I'll pull my images, and also an Iris key secret, which just has the Iris key I'll be using for my two instances. I'll also define a config map for my CPF file, which is up here. There isn't anything special in that CPF file, it's just setting the name of the instance and some default global and heap settings. My storage class is essentially Kubernetes default recommendation. <clears throat> Here it's named Iris SSD storage class. The provisioner is AWS EBS. My type is GP2. And wait for first consumer just means that it won't be initialized until I get my Iris cluster up and going. I already have IKO up and running. As you can see here, it's my only pawn. <clears throat> and I'll start two clusters with the same security settings. One is with an Iris 2020.4 container and the other with Iris Lockdown. and we can watch those pods configure. While that gets going, let's take a look at the YAML for those two clusters. First, we have a cluster with the Iris container, which I've called Iris Broken, because as we'll see, this configuration won't work. This is using IKO's custom YAML, which we can see with the API version, intersystems.com v1 alpha 1, and the kind Iris cluster. Under topology, I'm just asking for one iris instance, aka one non-mirrored shard. I have my iris image specified here. And under security context, I have those strict security set settings that I've been mentioning. The container will run as non-root, specifically as a user with UID 51773 and group ID 51773, and users will not be able to escalate their privileges. FS group, or file system group, specifies the group that will own the pods file systems. These other settings are just to set up the cluster storage, update strategy, and makes a load balancer. In my Iris Lockdown YAML, you'll see almost the same settings. I've called this cluster Iris Lockdown. I'm using the same key in CPF file, still just applying one Iris instance and I'm using the same strict security settings. The main difference is that here I need to specify the readiness and liveliness probes specifically. Since Iris Lockdown doesn't install Iris as root, the health check script is in a different directory, so I need to manually specify the location instead of using IKO's default. The remaining settings for storage, update strategy, and my load balancer are all the same as my other Iris cluster. Let's take a look at our clusters. Our Iris Lockdown pod is up and ready, but Iris Broken seems to be stuck, so let's take a look at the logs. All right, so 
It tries to start Iris, but it seems to be hanging. It's been, been a few minutes, so since this is Kubernetes, let's just kill this pod so it gives us a fresh one and hope that one works. And while that gets reinitialized, let's look at Iris Lockdown. So this is more what we're looking for. Scroll the way back up to the top. Uh, here we have, we copied the key, started inner systems iris, and this is where the other instance stopped. It never continued on with initialization. So let's go into our actual contain our actual instance to see what's going on in there. We can start an iris terminal. And I mean, I could show you anything here, but that's just a regular iris terminal working fine. And we can also see that the private Apache web server is disabled. See, we only have one process coming up when normally there would be about three. This is just for the search that we just did. It's not any HTTP process that's running. Let's look back at our cluster with regular iris. Ah, so we've run into a crash loop back off state for this broken cluster. So that basically means that our pod is hitting an error and restarting over and over again. So let's take a look at the logs. So this is the error that we're looking for here. Right after we start initializing Iris, which is where it was hanging before, we enter an indeterminate state because the binary that we're trying to run is owned by UID 0, group ID 52773, but we are user 51773, group ID 51773. So that's just never going to work. So if you want to use strict security settings for your container, Iris Lockdown is how you should do it. The main point is that Iris Lockdown configures Iris to be compatible with highly secure container environments. If you don't need a single non-root user or the stricter default security from the Lockdown installation, the Iris container is still your best choice. If you want to learn more, we have two more sessions this virtual summit that might be interesting to you. Dev002 covers bringing a product to production in Kubernetes, and Dev003 teaches you about IKO, our inner systems Kubernetes operator, which makes deploying on Iris on Kubernetes much easier than configuring everything yourself. We also have two Ask the Expert days, where you can schedule to meet with me or another member of the container team if you have any questions. Or check out our container material on learning.innersystems.com. Thank you, and if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat now or reach out via